This is lecture three of the oral rehab class. And in lecture three, uh, we're going to be covering here the audiogram and other issues of audibility. Part of this, uh, well, lecture three is divided up into five parts, uh, each of about 15 minutes each to make it easier for me to upload and you to download. Uh, the first couple of parts, the first three parts, uh, deal with uh, description of the audiogram and information available on the audiogram and limitations and such of the audiogram. Uh, that would have been information that you would have reviewed in your basic audiometry class. Parts four and five of lecture three deal with uh, the relationship between audibility of speech and uh, audiometric uh, presentation. Um, and and uh, that'll become clearer as we sort of get to that part of it. So the first part here we want to review then uh, is just simply uh, basic audiologic testing. Again, material you would have had in audiometry, but uh, just to be sure that we all understand and have a, a common vocabulary moving forward. All right, so basic audiologic testing. Uh, the most basic test is a test of hearing thresholds. This is a test of sensitivity, which is uh, a test uh, that involves a, a detection task. Uh, basic hearing threshold uh, assessment uh, utilizes individual test tones or frequencies, pure tones. Pure tones because they only have energy at one frequency. That's the usual definition of a pure tone. And typically, under the, the, the most uh, the basic test, uh, the stimulus, the acoustic stimulus, is generated using an earphone, and therefore we say this is an air conduction test because the acoustic stimulus uh, is delivered through the air of the ear canal, so we say it's air conduction. The exact same test can be done in terms of the principles of the test and frequencies and such uh, using a bone vibrator, in which case the, uh, the stimulus is delivered by uh, a bone vibrator placed on the skull, someplace usually behind the ear. Uh, this test then is referred to as bone conduction testing. Regardless of the test modality, air versus bone, uh, this particular task, the hearing threshold, is a test of sensitivity. And, and in sensitivity, uh, what we're talking about is what's the least amount of amplitude at that particular frequency that was detected by a listener. And the, the use of the word threshold implies that we're, we're utilizing a standard uh, psychometric procedure, which involves a, a criterion response level, which has uh, been by, decided by consensus and standard to be a 50% response rate. So when we say someone has an audiometric threshold, or it says their audiogram shows, uh, that threshold means that's the least amount of sound that they could detect for 50% of the trial. So uh, again, one other point to note on threshold testing. Uh, is that threshold testing, the metric of measurement, the, what's actually written down, what's, what's noted, is um, a value in decibels. There are two other sort of uh, other basic tests that, that an audiologist might do uh, in hearing assessment. Um, one of them is, is uh, also a threshold task, but utilizes a speech stimulus. And so this is referred to as a speech recognition threshold task. In speech recognition threshold, uh, speech recognition threshold testing uh, is a test that um, is a test of sensitivity but uses two-syllable words like airplane, cowboy, hot dog, baseball. But the, the psychometrics of the procedure is pretty much the same in the sense that it's uh, what's the least amount of amplitude it would take a listener to repeat back those words. There is a second type of speech recognition test um, using monosyllabic words. Now the distinction here is is that the amplitude is audible to the listener. So uh, in point of this uh, in carrying out this particular test, the uh, the amplitude is set at a level at which the person uh, the words are audible to them, and then it's a test of understanding. Speech recognition threshold test is a test of threshold, so the metric is uh, the measurement is done in decibels. S uh, speech recognition with monosyllabic words sometimes called speech discrimination, although that's not psychometrically correct. But speech recognition or monosyllabic word recognition test is a test in which the, uh, the number generated is a percent correct, where 100% would be 100% correct score on that test. And that's a test that we would typically uh, utilize to um, address uh, the person's word understanding ability. 
Again, just to review basic equipment, uh, equipment used in basic audiologic assessment, uh, there's an audiometer uh, that's used. An audiometer is nothing more than a precision device, precision uh, calibrated device, calibrated being keywords there, calibrated device that delivers the acoustic stimulus for the basic hearing test. And essentially what we're, uh, what we're doing in, in, uh, with an audiometer is we're delivering uh, individual test frequencies in hertz, and we're measuring those in, in decibels. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, in, in decibels, uh, so we're looking at different frequencies, and we're adjusting the decibel value uh, to determine what the, uh, the threshold value would be. That's essentially what we're doing with, uh, with audiometer. Uh, audiometric testing is carried out also using transducers. Um, uh, earphones uh, for, for in air conduction are either called insert earphones in which the ear, there's a tip inserted into the ear canal uh, with a disposable cuff that uh, expands and those are uh, hygienically superior um, and uh, have other um, audiometric uh, values. Uh, the typical ones that uh, that you might have utilized in, in uh, practice with audiometry are, this, uh, are the super oral earphones, those black donut looking like things which rest on the ear. In addition, in basic audiometry, we use a bone conduction transducer, sometimes also referred to as a bone vibrator. That's put on the, bone, on the, on the, on the uh, mastoid part behind the ear. In basic uh, hearing measurement, um, we also refer to this as pure tone threshold audiometry. And, and typically in, in pure tone threshold audiometry, uh, when someone refers to that, the, the implication is that we're talking about um, an air conduction test. Um, and uh, in threshold audiometry, uh, the task is to find the least amount of sound for individual f uh, test frequencies or pure tones. A typical test would utilize approximately six different frequencies uh, to do that. Um, Again, the, the, uh, the frequencies that are chosen in, in threshold audiometry are typically in the range of, of frequencies that are the most important frequencies that humans need to hear. And this corresponds with the frequencies that are most uh, commonly found in human speech. Um, we can hear sounds that are uh, somewhat uh, lower in frequency than we typically test clinically. We can uh, respond to sounds that are typically higher in frequency than we typically test in pure tone audiometry. But um, the frequencies that we use are the most important ones because they're the ones that correspond with, with uh, speech energy. So in, uh, if we think of the three basic characteristics of, of the acoustics of any signal, it's frequency, it's amplitude, and it's duration, the audiogram gives us information about two out of those three acoustic characteristics, uh, frequency and amplitude. Uh, the, the, uh, the lack here is that uh, basic pure tone audiometry does not provide us any information regarding our perception of duration of sounds. In fact, duration is, is maintained as a constant on a typical audiometric test in which the presentation level needs to be at least three to four to 500 milliseconds uh, in duration or longer. Any duration shorter than that will alter the test outcome and make the audiogram appear poorer. So each individual test stimulus has to be sort of under control at least about 500 milliseconds. When we do that, uh, when we assess pure tones, uh, we use a pure tone uh, to, do, to uh, uh, and measure its amplitude. Uh, what we're what we're assessing then is the least amount of energy in decibels that was required in order for that uh, person to respond to that sound. When we find out that value at at a specific frequency, how many decibels were required in order for that person to respond at threshold, meaning on 50% of the trials, what well, was the least amount of amplitude for 50% of the trials? We plot that particular piece of information on a graph, on a two-variate two graph called the audiogram. The audiogram is a graph that displays a hearing threshold, which has frequency uh, in hertz, uh, and uh, the concept of hertz is named after Heinrich Hertz. And so um, Heinrich Hertz, let's put him in over here, is... Um, Uh, it was a, a, a 19th century uh, uh, engineer who um, basically described sort of microwave technology, believe it or not, uh, that we utilize now all the time. Uh, so the, the notion of um, 
of uh, frequency, uh, uh, capital H, small z, because it's a proper name, uh, is analogous to pitch, so tonality or pitch of a stimulus, uh, but in the physical terms we call it frequency. Sound level, or the amount of sound amplitude, is in decibels. And again, uh, here we have uh, decibels where the B is a capital because it's named after uh, Alexander Graham Bell. So uh, small d for deci, capital B for bell, that's on the other axis. That's analogous to the uh, loudness, the amplitude of the stimulus. When we actually look at an example audiogram grid, you see these two, um, these two variables plotted. Uh, and this is a very typical looking um, audiogram grid uh, in which you have frequency uh, going across uh, this way. And you see different frequencies, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000. 4,000 and 8,000 hertz. You see that in some places, and many audiometers have the capacity to test in between frequencies as well. So many audiometers, you have the capacity to test at 1,500 hertz, 3,000 uh, hertz, 6,000 hertz. Down here, it's 750 hertz. So there's a variety of different frequencies that are available on the typical audiogram. But this is the typical frequency spread that you will see. Uh, on the audiogram here, you also see that um, uh, that you see this uh, range of decibels. And the audiogram is, is unique in the sense that the amplitude, the least amount of amplitude is toward the top, and the greater amount of amplitude is to the bottom. And that's really odd, usually, uh, in terms of scientific notation. So uh, zero decibels, in this case, would be a, a, a value that's very, very, very low in amplitude. 100 decibels down here would turn out to be uh, an amplitude that's very, very high in amplitude. The symbols that we use to plot on the audiogram are standardized. Um, there's also uh, in uh, convention, uh, more historically than anything, uh, red was always right, blue was always left. So any symbols, uh, you could also maintain information by using the color. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just more important to note that um, uh, right ear air conduction these circles, right, uh, left ear air conduction these X's, uh, and then we have uh, different symbols for masking. There's also, um, uh, I'm sorry, different symbols for bone conduction uh, under different conditions of, uh, of bone conduction testing. So this is a, a uh, there are many uh, other symbols, but this is a reasonable set of symbols to, uh, to utilize at this point. Audiogram has several advantages. Uh, primarily, it's uh, simple in terms of its, its instrumentation, uh, the task for the, uh, the patient. Uh, it's standard in the sense that it uses calibrated stimulus. It's inexpensive. Uh, and it's familiar. A lot of professionals, uh, physicians, doctors, and so on, um, are familiar with it. So those are the, the primary advantages of it. The disadvantages of it are that it's so simple that uh, it doesn't really reflect anything in the patient's real world. Um, it doesn't predict, for example, something that's very important, which is how well a person understands speech. So um, it, it is a very sort of va very basic, basic kind of test. Um, I would argue also that the interpretation of it is uh, also oversimplified. Things that are not found on a single audiogram are, are things that might vary across time. Um, doesn't, uh, a single audiogram doesn't tell us when uh, the time of onset of a hearing loss was. It doesn't speak to the permanency of hearing loss. And it doesn't really, talk, it doesn't really give me information, one audiogram, based on the stability of that uh, particular finding, of that hearing loss. All of those, however, can be determined by um, uh, comparison to earlier or other audiograms. Now we're going to adjourn to part two, uh, in which we're going to look at the classic uh, four descriptors of the audiogram in terms of degree, type, configuration, and symmetry.